cantaloupe here and this is going to be a different kind of video something wildly different than I've been making with uh, programming but now I'm going to do something I remember from when I was in uh, camp I went to summer camp one year when I was younger and I learned how to make these things and it's uh, a, kind of a neat skill you can uh, make a bracelet or uh, it's a cloth form of jewelry it's a friendship bracelet some people call it and uh, you can make a, make it with any colors, and I'm gonna actually show you how to do that. So let's jump right in, thanks. So I, uh, I happened upon some yarn, and yarn is cool, it works, actually worked surprisingly well. Um, not the best form of string that you could use for this. Uh, I usually use, if left my own devices of uh, embroidery thread and there are some stores that you can uh, get this stuff from um, any fabric store or uh, art supply store should have some kind of embroidery string if you ask for it they'll know what you're talking about usually and there's perhaps hundreds of colors lots and lots of different colors to choose from I, I have three in this video and uh, what's interesting to note is I only have three and the number of strings you choose to begin with uh, with this approach, this method I'm using here, determines how wide the bracelet's going to be at the end. So if you start with three, it's that's almost not even a bracelet. I mean, you can do it, and that might be actually a good practicing point to start from, but um, I'm, I'm actually just doubling it. So I, in the video you see here, I actually have to tear the string apart. Uh, I didn't have my scissors with me. I have scissors, but I didn't bring them. Um, so I end up with um, three long, fairly long strands, maybe um, you know four or five feet long, maybe a little bit extra. And then um, I just folded the three in half, so now you have you know six strands. They're the color, the same color as doubled. And uh, what I do in the video here is what you're looking at is I, I uh, tie a, tie a knot in the middle, and you want to find a fixed point. To attach it to so you, it, this could be on your body it can be something stationary like a, ta a chair or table leg something that's not going to move because you want to be able to like pull on it a little bit is it not a lot of force but something that's not going to move real easy so you can use your own shoe if you have a, a shoe with something you can tie the string to so that's what I'm doing I'm just attaching it temporarily to uh, my, my shoelace and um, you'll see why because uh, there's going to be a series of knots that you tie in a certain order, and uh, some, some people are familiar with this already. If, if this is review, then feel free to skip the video, but uh, a lot of people this is brand new to, and I, I think it's pretty interesting. Um, perhaps the ideal number to, to start with, if I had to recommend a number of threads or strings to start with, it would be five, because you don't end up with one more than you can manage between your fingers. So you're using your hand as kind of a loom. It's a like a weaving loom, if you're familiar with that device. And uh, you simply put uh, each string uh, beside or in between each of your fingers, except obviously the, your pinky at the end. Um, there's nothing to hold it in place. So that one, if there was another string after that, and you can have as many as you want. You can have you know 20 or 30, and some people make these big, fancy, wide bracelets. Um, you would uh, just let the remainder hang down. Uh, so you're, you're working with you know, a maximum of, you've got your main string that you're going to be using to tie knots with, and then you've got one, two, three, four, and then you just kind of wrap them around your pinky so that you can you know, pull on, you see what I'm doing in the video, that's exactly what I'm doing. And you tie a knot, you actually tie two, so it's, you just go under and up and you see how I'm doing this and you do it twice per strand and the reason you do it twice is because it ends up looking a lot better if you, if you just do it you could just do it once but you get kind of a funky less uh, appealing result at the end so um, I speed up the video shortly here so you don't have to actually watch me make the whole thing but uh, it's it, uh, it's it turned out really well. You can see in the goal there that that, that finished product is the one I'm actually making. And um, 
I actually will let you probably watch this uh, if you like while I'm making it and I will be right back. So you also see in the, uh, the little graphic up in the upper left there, it's, it shows you um, the, what I described, how you, you fold, basically fold your strands in half. And, um, that's not necessary. That step is just if you only want to have, say, three colors and you just want to make it easy, you just double it. And that's an easy way to do it. Or they could all be different colors. And what's interesting to note is uh, the, the order of your strands that you're, you're working your way um, down. So you, you tie your knots, you double tie each strand, and then you end up with what was the first strand at the end. It's gonna be all the way to the right. And then um, in my case, because I have an extra string hanging down, just because of the number, I have one extra, I part of my process is I redo the uh, you know, I just move over a step and tie uh, put the, st the strands in between my fingers and then um, I tie the, I tie the last one and what happens is the one that starts becomes the one on the end and then you just do the whole thing over starting from the left what is now the left side and the order of those colors is the order of the stripes that you end up with on the finished result which is really cool and what I wanted to point out is uh, if you get really into this and you make the, the big big wider ones, you can actually vary the order that you're tying knots in and make designs and shapes and stuff. And I don't really get into all that in this video, but uh, something to look into if you're into embroidery or uh, jewelry, I guess. Um, what you would do if you had a huge number of strings is uh, instead of moving over once you would just do it every four i think it's four four strands so you you, you do your four not four double knots you let go of the strings you separate those over to the left and then you just you move your hand over until you reach the end and then you repeat the whole you repeat with the next ray and you just keep doing it until you end up with a finished result so you can see i'm making pretty good progress here this is sped up i'm not really sure how many times i sped this part up but um taking shape. <laughs> these are these are pretty durable. So I mentioned the different types of material you can use. Uh, this is just basic knitting yarn, I believe. I didn't I don't think it's anything fancy. I got it for free and it's a um, I just have the, the white, green, and blue. And um, <clears throat> It is very tough stuff, this yarn, because it's made for crocheting, it's made for making, you know, clothing and scarves and, and socks and stuff like that, so it's got to be durable. Um, and the embroidery thread is also very durable. And these things can last a long time if you think about, uh, you know, making something for somebody, a gift, uh, for a holiday or a birthday. Um, people usually love these things, especially because they're personal and something that you worked on yourself shows a lot of thought. That's why they're called friendship bracelets because uh, you don't usually just hand them out for free because they take a while. <laughs> so um, that's almost um, all I had to say about it. You can kind of just see the rest of it here. It's almost an ASMR video at this point. <laughs> but um, One thing to point out uh, is that um, if you make a mistake, now 
it's easy to get distracted while you're doing these um, because you have to pay very close attention to uh, the order and, and the number of knots that you have tied on, in, uh, on a particular strand at the row you're working on. So if some, something or someone distracts you while you're doing this, you can lose count. You can, uh, it's, it's usually easy to see which one is the main string because it's kind of hanging down in the middle, but you might not know exactly how many knots you've tied. So it's easy to make a mistake, but that just adds character. So people just say that the mistakes make them unique and, and valuable or whatever. But, um, I actually only made one mistake in this one, I think, and that was on my very first row. And I, I think that that's not even a really a mistake in this case because uh, that's part of the knot that ties it together. It's, it's not even really part of the main part of the bracelet. But, um, it's kind of a test and it's a good practice to uh, you know stay focused if you can you know finish a whole bracelet without making any mistakes. It's a, it's a testament to your, your concentration I guess. But I'm almost done with it here and then uh, you'll see the end result. Yeah, okay, so I just um, took it off. Um, it's ready to go. There it is. That's the end thing. Came out great. So, if you have any questions, I'll put my contact information, and I uh, hope you have a great day.